is impossible. I'm so humbled by these people. Douglas Ricardo says the Paralympic Games is amazing. Just love it. So next up, we've got the men's 1500 T11. That's uh, again for people with a visual impairment. So we will see guide runners with all of the six competitors in this final. And uh, Santos of Brazil is the world record holder and he is in lane one. Dunkley of Canada in two, Kimani of Kenya in three, Valenzuela of Chile in four, Sosa of Colombia in five and Anderson of Denmark in six, all with their respective guides. Which you've got to be hard pressed to find a guide that can run this fast. Santos has run 359.44 as a personal best, a sub four minute 1500 there. It's not like you just go down the block and find somebody who's a relatively fast runner and they can jump into this. These guides are world-class runners as well, and they have to be. Otherwise, they get dropped by their, their competitor. Now, in the sprinting, I know the guide has to stay behind the runner. Is that the same in the, in the distance event? It is, and you'll see that they're tethered together. You can see these guys, the Kenyans right there, holding their tether. You can see, you can see the Chileans right there. <laughs> with their tether and that tether needs to be slack the whole time so that so that the the runner is not gaining any kind of a, any kind of forward momentum from his guide Colombian there with the flag painted on his glasses and they all seem to have different sorts of tethers some have almost a ribbon some like a rope Lace, yeah exactly a ribbon a length of webbing so here we go the 1500 meters the men's final for the T11 for visually impaired with guide runners so three and three quarter laps. And they break straight around away. the track. And uh, it's the Brazilian who's gone into the lead. That's uh, Santos. He is the world record holder. And he's in the lead at the moment. And looking very, very comfortable. And it gets a lot more challenging. You see that there are a whole lot more, more feet on the track. And these guys are completely blind. They can't see anything. And the problem is that you get tripped up. You see in a lot of these races that that it's really easy to get tripped up. And when you put two more people on the track with the guides, you know, just multiply that number by, by two, all of a sudden it's, it's a whole lot harder. And you're looking at people that are actually, they have pretty decent spacing, which is as a result of, of the guide runners right now. So Santos of Brazil into the lead, Dunkley of uh, Canada and Kimani of Kenya, tracking him at the moment. It's the Kenyan in second place and uh, Dunkley of Canada just falling away a bit at the moment, but it's the Brazilian out in the lead, Santos of Brazil, with his guide runner. You can see that uh, very thin yellow rope they have joining them, and the Kenyans just behind, Kimani of Kenya, and it's the Chilean runner, Valenzuela, who's moved into uh, the bronze medal position at the moment. And they went through 400 at 101. So I'd imagine they will pick up the pace, but you can see the Canadian is just hanging out on on the Brazilian's shoulder right now. It's a good place to be where you let the Brazilian do the pacemaking. There's quite a gap from second to third. So they're relatively comfortable in that. And I don't think he's gonna, the Canadian's gonna sit right there and be totally content to sit there until the bell lap. Now people that are not familiar with watching uh, this sort of event, it, it must be quite difficult for the guide when they're gonna do an overtaking maneuver. If you're tethered to somebody else, you've all gotta go at the same time, haven't you? You do have to go at the same time, and obviously it's going to be the, the the guide is the eyes for the runner. So will he shout? So, so he'll kind of tell him some of what's going on. The runner has a pretty decent idea of what's going on just mm -hmm. in terms of you go through the turns, you go through the straightaways. They've run a whole lot of laps on the track, but it's going to be the guide member, you know, the guide who's going to say, hey, look, this, are you ready to go? Do you want to go? Which I'd imagine is a little bit harder mm -hmm. for you know, to keep your secrecy, to, to, to maintain that sense of surprise, which is as big an element for, for these athletes as anything. And obviously, uh, they speak different languages in Brazil and Kenya, but when the Kenyan guy shouts to his guy, we're going past, the Brazil <laughs> Brazilians are going to guess what it means, aren't There's they? There's a pretty decent universal language. You hear the bell lap going, that means that they're, they have 400 meters to go. And it's hard to call this one. And we've got Brazil in front of Kenya. So Santos of Brazil, Kimani of Kenya, 
and I can't see which way this one's going to go. Do you think it's going to be a sprint finish? It's either the Kenyans are going to come past right at the end on the, on the bend, um, or we're going to see the Brazilians just suddenly dig in. Well, if the Kenyan's going to make his break, he's going to do it now. Which uh, is of course, kind of an interesting thing because he's making his break in the turn, so the hope is that he actually can get past, which he did get past because it would have been easy for the Brazilian to pick up the pace and push him out and make him go further. And he's striding away, and you can see he's act absolutely in, completely in step with his guide runner. And that's a great run from Kimani of Kenya. He came past in quite a difficult place because he, the guide runner was almost out in lane four. But Kimani of Kenya is going to win this one quite comfortably. Will it be a world record? 4.04.32. I think it will be. Coming up to it, he might even get under four minutes. He has, he's under four minutes. It's a new world record, 3.58.37 for Kimani of Kenya. That's a terrific run. Santos of Brazil getting the silver. And the Kenyan is absolutely shattered, but he's taken four or five seconds off the world record there and become the first runner to go under four minutes in the uh, men's 1500 T11 final. Samuel Mushai Kimani. James Boyt is his... And we have uh, something on here, a true love story. Something about a true love story. I didn't see what it meant, but obviously means a lot to him. Oh, he's making a lot of noise. He's a happy chap. Yes, it said true love story on a bit of sort of blue paper or something that he's yes. holding up. I'm imagining it's a message for somebody watching on the TV back home. We had a wedding proposal last night. I'm not quite sure what we had there, but I'm sure whoever that was meant for will have been delighted, not only by his little gesture, but also by the fact that he's become the first man to run under four minutes. And he was straight down on the ground. <laughs> as well he should, because he, he used all the energy he had. And the thing is, he used all the energy he had as well as he possibly could, going 358.37 for a 